Okay, let's continue with our problem here. So we've got everything set up now. Let's go into the solver and actually start calculating things out. So we're going to go to data. This is where all the fun stuff in Excel happens all the way over here to our solver. We're going to click on that. So our objective, we will pick our total cost. That's what we're trying to find. We're trying to minimize that. And so we want to change cells. We want to change the number of ads purchased. So just a quick reminder, it's going to try to minimize this cell by changing the, these cells that we have here. And also remember that the objective has to be connected to the decision variables some way by equations. And so we're going to add some constraints. We've only got one at the moment, and we're going to take that the actual exposures have to be greater than or equal to. So we make sure that uh, this we got here matches that greater than or equal to our required exposures. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. All the range names have filled in. Make sure to make non-constrained variables non-negative. And we're going to go to LP. Always want to be an LP. And so here we go. Here's a little tip. I'm not sure how you would do it in a Mac, but we can do a little screen capture of this so we can just put that on the page so we can look at it. So Windows used to have a thing called Snipping Tool, but now they have a new one. If you hit the Windows key, Shift and S, it brings up this little screen capture window. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight my solver box there. And so it's been saved to the clipboard. And after I run this, we're just going to put it somewhere on our Excel sheet. So that's all we've got. We're going to hit Solve. We're going to let it run. It found a solution, so everything's good. We're going to hit OK, and then we're going to take a look at this. First thing I want to do is just over here, I'm going to Control V, and that is my parameters. So it's just a way that I can kind of keep track of what's going on, and I can see what I put in without actually having to open up the solver. And once again, this is where the range names comes in really handy, because I can just look over this and I can see, oh, those are what all the names of my things are. I can see them all there, so it's all great. Okay, so let's go and talk about things first. First of all, let's uh, write down original solution. So this is the original solution that we've got. I'm just going to take all of this stuff, control C, and control V. So I just copied it down. All right. So, and also we are going to control C our total cost. We'll put it right here and bring that over. Control C. So using the optimization just straight out, we have found that it's going to be $1.87 million to hit our minimum exposures. But this is also providing that the TV companies are going to allow us to do things like buy 8.719 ads. That's not going to happen because they're going to sell things in 30 second increments. So what can we do? Well, one of the first things that we can do is, well, we can do what's called the rounded solution. And so all the rounded solution is going to be, I'm going to control C and I'm going to paste the format here, which is a little paintbrush just to get the same thing going on. So we have the rounded solution to where we're going to just sit there and we're going to take our things and go, okay, well, this is the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round everything up to the next whole number. Because if I can't buy 0.625 of an ad or 5 eighths of an ad, well, I can buy 21. And so that, since this is the minimum I need for my exposures, I know if I round up, I'm going to be fine. So we're just going to go here equals. We're going to use the round up command. So it rounds a number up away from zero. So we're going to pick our number, which is just going to be up here. The number of digits we want to round to is zero. That will make it a whole number. And there we go. And then I'll just drag this over. Da -da -da. Not, not move it, drag it. And that should round everything up. Okay, so, you know, we're going from uh, 20.625 to 21. So let's figure out what the total cost now would be. So we're going to equal, we're going to sum product, hit tab to fill that in. We're going to take this array that we just created, and then with our cost per ad, 
and we're going to sum that up. So by rounding up to get to where we can actually make our minimums, we're at $1.994 million. So this is our rounded solution. And the thing is, the rounded solution is very rarely an optimal solution. So the optimal solution is the optimize the best solution. Now, we have a small problem because if the rounded solution is not the best, what can we do? And that's where we can go in and we can add an integer constraint. And so one thing that I do want to do here that I forgot to do is let's just go back into Solver. We're going to run it again. Nothing's going to change. Let's throw out the sensitivity report. Say OK. And let's go. We're going to go and look at that sensitivity report here in a second. So the rounded solution is not quite the best. What are we going to do? Well, that's where we're going to rerun it with the integer constraints. One of the issues is once you add the integer constraints, you can no longer do that sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis is nice because you can look at it and see a lot of things going on, which we'll do here in a second. So a recommended process would be to, if you've got something like this where you think you're going to be running it with integer constraints, we want to run it without the integer constraints, generate that sensitivity report, and then run it again with the integer constraints. Um, the sensitivity analysis isn't going to be perfect because there's going to be some rounding errors because, once again, you don't get a sensitivity report out of the integer, the integer programming, but it's still going to give you an idea of how everything's going to be influenced by the solution. So let's go now. Of course, this thing's here, and I thought that window was still open. That will happen sometime. Sometimes let's go now and get the. We're going to calculate the integer solution, and then what we will do is we will go into that sensitivity report and actually look at what's going on. And so let's let me get rid of this because we're going to make a new one. So we're going to go into solver. The only thing that we're going to change is we're going to add a new constraint. So I'm going to pick all of those numbers of adds, and then I will click here where we have the greater than or equal to. I'm going to go down to int which stands for integer, and I'll hit OK. So now we can see the number of ads purchased is required to be an integer. So Windows key Shift S, I just want to bring up my cutting plane again. I want to copy that, drop that on the clipboard. I'm going to hit Solve. Now notice when I do Solver now, integer constraint within the tolerances, all constraints uh, satisfied. Notice that the only one they show is an answer report now because we can no longer do the sensitivity analysis because it is an integer solution. Okay, hit OK. I'm going to come over here. Let's Control-V. I'm going to drop that again. And once again, because we use range names, we can see what all that is. Now, if you want to get, we can get fancy here. Um, we can go into picture format and play around with it. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is... Uh, I like to use a glow around this, and I'll use uh, the second level glow. Pick your favorite color. I'm a big fan of blue and green, so we'll just use a blue. And I put that glow around it, so this is where I can see it and go, oh yeah, that's just a, a screenshot or a capture in there, so I will hopefully keep me from getting confused. But anyway, so we have that there. We can see what's going on, and what I want to do is we're just going to copy. Control-C, just for comparison's sake, Control-V, Control-C, Control-V. So now if we look at what's going on, our model has changed slightly. We've still gone to minimize everything that's going on. And you can see, actually, in this case, we end up getting the same, same amounts there. Except uh, I was wondering why this one had changed. I because we copied and pasted over with uh, the range names in there. It kind of pulled that over with there. So let's delete that. I'm going to put in back the original, which was one million eight seventy. There we go. And so that was the original one. I should have copied and pasted it over without without the attributes to it. 
And so now we have what our new solution is. So you'll notice these are all whole numbers now. And that's also a different mix because we put some stuff in CNN and Homeland and everything has been set to a whole number. And we can also see that it is more expensive than the original solution, but it is cheaper by quite a bit than the rounded solution. And so this is what the introduction of an integer constraint is going to do for our models. It makes everything whole numbers, which in some cases is what you need. What I'm going to do is there will be the third video in the set. It will be a shorter one. Where we're just going to talk a little bit about the sensitivity analysis and just run through that again. That one's only going to be a couple minutes long, but I do want to separate it into another video. So we will take a look at that in the next one.